Hello and welcome to another mini episode. Hopefully this is actually useful. I honestly have no idea. We're just gonna play it by ear and see what happens. But the goal for this episode is take an engine that let's say you got for free or have lying around and make it usable for a go-kart or mini bike application. So both of these engines I got for basically free. Both of them are off pressure washers. This one I got in a bundle deal, three pressure washers for like $20. I just gave them money just because I felt bad. But I got three running pressure washers for $20. So basically free, and that one was actually free. And they're Honda GC 160s. They were even both Excel pressure washers. The only difference was they had different pumps. And the result of that meant this one has a useless crankshaft, which you can't find any sort of clutch for. So this one ultimately is useless for a go-kart or mini bike. And I'm gonna show you how to fix that. We're gonna end up throwing away most of what's on here because the carb, exhaust, and gassing stuff are all in weird locations for a go-kart or mini-bike application. So we'll end up deleting a lot of that. I'll try to make it informative, but honestly, I've only torn down one of these before, and the other one I tore down was a vertical shaft versus a horizontal shaft. So I really have no idea what I'm doing, but I will look up torque specs and get them to you as I find them. The way I'm gonna make this one useful is I bought a crankshaft for that one. So if you look either of these engines up on an OEM parts supplier, when you look up the crankshaft, there's like 12 different variants available. And the only difference is the output shaft. So I ordered a crankshaft for that one, which should in theory be exactly the same as the one in here, but have a useful output shaft size. So I'll provide the model number of that one in the description. That way, if you have one of these where the sticker's worn out or whatever, you have a way to look up the same crankshaft I have. I'll also give you the part number for the crankshaft, but in any case, you can just look that one up and find the OEM parts for it. Hopefully by the time I'm done here, it actually still runs well. It does run currently, but again, it has the same issues that one did where since they are pressure washers, they were designed to run at wide open throttle constantly. And if you try to idle them and stuff, they just dump fuel and then leak everywhere. That all will get deleted anyway, because it has the exact same issue that one did. And I know what the end result has to be. So there's no reason to keep that stuff now. Okay, we're gonna kick it right off with explaining a couple things. So the case is split on the side here and also the valve cover, both of which are sealed just with RTV. There's no gaskets for them. Unlike Predators, Briggs and all those, there's no just side plate you can just take off. It splits diagonally down the side like this. And all the guts of it will stay with this half. There are seals for the crank themselves. I didn't buy them. They're probably gonna be fine. I have no idea to be honest though. We're gonna use this stuff for sealing it, which this is just, OEM sealant for Nissan and Subarus. I'm sure there's other variants you can get. I just default to this stuff because it's a really good quality and also it's rated for heat and oil. And also it's not too expensive for how much you get. You can also use just generic RTV as long as it's rated for motor oil and heat. You can kind of see here, they're not neatly sealed. There's all sorts of excess here. So you don't really have to worry about being super precise with it, but you do have to use a gasket material that is at least rated for heat and oil. This is the part number for the crankshaft we're using. Woo! It just came with the crankshaft and the little gear for the timing, which this has a timing belt. Like a, it's a little like vacuum cleaner belt. It's just this tiny little cogged belt. So this one is a seven eighths crank and it's only like an inch long, both of which are useless. So you could in theory extend it and then put a clutch on it, but good luck finding a clutch that's seven eighths. Like they just don't exist anymore. We're gonna use this one, which is a five eighths output shaft size. And also it's like two and a half inches long, which gives you a ton of leeway to put a clutch on it or CVT or whatever. With the overhead cam style, it's literally just a little plastic cam with a little, literally a vacuum cleaner belt that attaches it to the crank. But it, there's only one way to put it in because the valve cover kind of holds it in place, if that makes sense. Honestly though, for how much this is gonna cost me to build, anyone can really do this at home. This, I think this crank was like $38. And I got it off of one of those lawnmower OEM part suppliers websites, but you can also just get them on eBay and Amazon and stuff like that. They're really readily available. And the knowledge to do this is very minimal. Like literally you just need torque specs. We'll get to stripping this down real quick, cleaning it as we go. It's already drained of oil, but there's gonna be more in it anyway, because there always is. You're not gonna be able to see it from that far away, but the model number is stamped in the engine plate right here. Honestly, I can't imagine why you have one of these where that's been defaced unless someone's deliberately done it. So I'll still give you the model number for the one that I got the crankshaft from. And the only tool you're gonna need for this is a 10 millimeter. Like literally everything is 10 millimeter on this, except you may need like a flathead to pry it stuff. That feels like it's gonna break. I actually think there's fuel still in this if I remember right. Well, that explains where my fuel leak is coming from because somebody put RTV on here, but I don't think it was rated for fuel because I could just wipe it off with my hand. So that's cool. That can all go in the trash. You may be able to see it from that distance, but the governor is on the lower half of the case, which we're gonna separate from the upper half. So I could in theory just disconnect the spring and then it'll stay with it, which is with the portion of the governor that comes through the case, there's a flat spot in it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark 
on the arm where that flat spot is. That way when I put it back together, I don't have to have any guesswork with resetting the governor. I just now realized there's another tool you need, which is the socket for the flywheel, which I think is like 18 millimeter, but we'll find out in a second. The muffler one's probably soaked enough. Yep, there we go. There's 18, is that my guess? Nope, it's not an 18. Yes, it's a 19. And if I remember right, they're not even held on with that much torque. So let's try the little impact and see what happens. Easy, not even an issue. So that's on there with less than 100 foot pounds. And we should be able to just pop it off. Normally these Hondas don't fight you too much, but what we're gonna do is, gonna soak it a little bit and then give it a little tap with a hammer, rubber mallet that is. Put that nut back on, socket on that, and we're gonna whack the socket while prying on it a little bit. Yep, okay. Nope. Okay, I'm just gonna keep fighting this off camera. It's gonna be the same process. Worst case, I have the big claw style to pull it off, but normally this is all that it takes. I just need to do it without trying to look professional. I was able to get the flywheel off and also the flywheel woodruff key out, both of which fought me a lot. I don't know why they did, but I ended up having to use one of those chicken foot style pullers on it. I couldn't just do the nut and hammer sort of thing. We're gonna get the valve cover off now, which is just four 10 mils, and you're just gonna need a putty knife just to go around the perimeter because it is RTV in place. Bit here that sticks out. This is the dowel that holds the cam in place, and they can only go in one way because the valve cover takes up the difference. It's a full circle, but there's a notch cut into it. And the valve cover fits in that notch. You can't put this in the wrong way. The main reason I don't want to use a flat head is because this valve cover has a lip that runs the perimeter, and if you put a flat head in there and try to jam on it, you're going to deform it even more. This will bend to get underneath there, but it, like there's still a pretty good chance that I'm going to damage it more. This half is unsealed. Pretty easy. That's pretty dirty inside. Still things definitely missed some oil changes. Unfortunately, this is all stained pretty dark, so it makes it hard to see on camera. But normally you want to see like a really nice caramel color. So we have the timing belt here, the cam, which is only a single lobe little plastic cam, and the valve setup. So we're gonna take this dowel out down here, the one that I showed you earlier and then it'll remove tension from this and then we can slip everything apart. Gonna pull out this dowel, pull out the, slip the belt off, which I could probably, yeah, it's got pretty good tension on it actually. Take the cam out and then we can split the case. And we're just gonna leave the belt in there for now. It'll just dangle in there until we're ready to put it back together, so. t easy. Easy enough, just the dowel. It's got a little O-ring on it. I'll probably clean that up a little bit. Slip the belt off. Okay, cam can come out now. Pretty straightforward. When it comes to retiming it, you have these two little marks here. These need to be exactly in line with the mating surface of the valve cover. So we got eight 10 mils that hold the two halves of the case together. And then you're gonna use a putty knife like the valve cover just to slowly work around it and get it loosened up. From there, just do your best to not gall up the mating surface. You're gonna have to clean up anyway since there's a bunch of RTV on it, but still just try not to scratch it up. If I remember right, all these are the same length as well. You're not really gonna be able to see it, but there's a couple areas in this case designed to pry on. So right here, you have these two mating surfaces together. There's a larger gap there, like just for something to pry it. So that's one of them. And then there should be, there's another one right there. As far as I know, these are designed just for that purpose. There we go, now it's starting to go. We're just gonna work this around. Actually, I'm gonna leave that in there and use another one. There's a couple dowels in here somewhere. I forget where they're at. Leaking oil already. Easy peasy. It's gonna take a while to clean up. Damn, they use so much RTV. There's just globs of it. I'm legitimately surprised this stuff didn't break free and float around in the engine. That's part of the risk with pressure washers. You know, you use them once or twice a year at most. So people think, oh, I only used it once. I don't need to service it. Like they go by use, not age. So like chances are this thing had like one or two oil changes in its life. And that's not great. I think I'll probably still order a belt and order the crank seals. Just for the sake of while I'm here, might as well. There's a little bit of wear on the end cap. So again, probably backing up the one or two oil change theory but definitely not enough to kill it. So we're gonna push the piston out of the way by rotating this around and then it should just stay at the top. I've got the plug still in it. That's how we still have compression. That's literally air getting past the rings. 
easy peasy. Oops. And now we have a paperweight. We're gonna reuse this shim. And it was beveled side towards the timing gear. So the more worn out side, in my case, was the one that was closer to the timing gear. So we'll put it back as we found it. So here's the entire difference. So they are identical. Timing gear is gonna go on this one and that's the difference in the output shaft size. I'm not a huge fan of the plastic timing gear, but in any case, there's a little notch here in the crank that corresponds to the indentation on the timing gear and it just drops on there. And I could literally throw this in right now, get it all back together and have it done in a couple minutes. However, I'm gonna order the seals and the timing belt just because I'm here, I might as well. Got all the parts in to get this thing back together. So the order of operation is replace the seals in the case, get everything mocked up in place with the belt and crank and connecting rod and all that, use a bunch of assembly lube, and then put an RTV around the case and the valve cover, let it sit for like 10 minutes so it sets up a little bit and then torque it to spec. So starting off with parts, that's the timing belt. Those are the two part numbers for seals. It wasn't really necessary, but these are the part numbers for the drain bolts. They're just little crush washers. Same with all normal seals, you just give them a little bit of lubrication and tap them in with the largest socket you have that fits the outer perimeter. You don't want to press on anything else. Good enough. Crank can go in now. Tapered end is the flywheel side. The easier way to tell is the cam gear is in line with the cam belt channel thing. So we're gonna just drop it in there. Assembly lube as always. Same thing with the connecting rod, just Bunch of assembly lube. As it turns out, all of the bolts that need a torque spec, which include the connecting rod, the case, and the valve cover are all the same torque spec, which is 108 inch pounds or nine foot pounds, whatever your torque wrench uses. Perfect. You're not gonna be able to see it. I know the camera will refuse to focus, but on the low portion of the crank, there's a little arrow and that needs to be totally in line with the mating surface of the head. That's the proper timing sequence for that. Uh, little marks are just about lined up. I'm gonna slip them on the crank right there and slip that on. Make sure it's nice and seated. Use the convex side down onto the cam gear and then we can drop in this dowel which will also get assembly lube. See, this is tilted a little bit, so we just gotta rotate it like that, nice and flat, and that'll allow the valve cover to sit on top of it. Before I even RTV it, I'm gonna rotate this by hand like four times, and just to make sure it keeps lining up timing-wise. I've spun it over about a half a dozen times. It still lines up timing-wise, which is perfect. So what I'm gonna do now is I've already wiped the mating surface just with brake clean, just to make sure the RTV adheres. We're gonna do a bead of it all the way around. Honda recommends that you finger it. You just do the little dabbing method I'll show you in a moment, but to increase surface area of the RTV, lay the other side of the case down, put the bolts in hand tight, let it sit for like 10 minutes, then torque it down fully. You don't wanna like torque it down while it's wet because it's just gonna squeeze out all the RTV out of all the gaps. Secondly, these case bolts do have a torque sequence and also a torque spec. The torque spec is 108 inch pounds, like I said earlier. The only torque sequence I found was for a GCV version of this, which is the vertical shaft lawnmower version. So I'm gonna do that sequence, but I'm not gonna tell you what it is just in case I'm wrong, you don't copy me. When in doubt, do the crisscross method. So start, you know, alternate back and forth, make sure it's nice and even, and obviously go to torque spec. So I'll show you once again, here's the RTV I'm gonna use. You can use other RTVs, like as long as it's rated for oil and heat, it'll be fine. Okay, so now that we have a bead all the way around, all you want to do is just tap it all the way around. Just doing so creates more surface area. Articat, Honda, and I'm sure others recommend it as well. It's just pretty standard. You can get away with just leaving this as it is. You can even smear it. However, I'm just gonna stick with what the OE says. Okay, now that that's been thoroughly fingered, we're gonna go ahead and put some assembly lube on this portion of the crankshaft, and then we are good to put the cases together. Now that the case bolts are snug but not torqued to spec, we're gonna go ahead and start doing the valve cover ones, which same process, just clean up the mating surface, RTV, finger it, let it sit for a couple minutes, then torque it to spec. If this dowel is lined up right, this valve cover will drop right on, in which case ours does. So good on that. Well, that's nice, I got brake clean over spray onto my freshly painted valve cover. So now it's stained. So as far as the flywheel torque spec, I didn't look that up and I'm not gonna bother. I'm just gonna torque the shit out of it. There, good enough. Good 
and the starter's not caught on the flywheel. Cool. So just to recap, I have about 60 bucks in this engine, I think 63 officially. The engine was free, or rather the pressure washer was free, which made the engine free. The crank was 49. The seals, the timing belt, and the little drain plug gaskets were like $12, so 60 whatever. So really, that's a pretty good deal. I think if you ever had to try to hunt for an engine before, you realize that it's not that easy to come across a good usable one that will actually last. So you can go out and buy a cheap junk engine and it's gonna blow up. Or you can try to find a good one. And usually when you find like a Honda, they've been run to the death anyway because they're Hondas and they just run forever. Thankfully, the pump failed on this one. So this one didn't get that much use internally. It looked fine. I didn't see any issues. Same with one of the Bonanza Nugget bike. I'm gonna do the same process on that engine too, just to see what it looks like inside and gauge its health by that. But all in all, for having this in here for 60 bucks, you can't go wrong. Like I doubt I could replace this for $60. And even then, if I'm buying a used one for 60 bucks or more, I have no idea what's been done to it. It's not been fully serviced like this one has. In any case, gonna put this one on the shelf until I have a project for it. It'll probably be on a mini bike or something in the future, but at least now it has a usable output shaft size so I can actually buy a clutch for it or torque converter or whatever. So hopefully that was informative and also at least moderately entertaining. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know. But with all that being said, thanks for watching and stay tuned. Yep, just break everything. Okay, instructions, we're not gonna need those. And then when we're ready to seal back up, we're gonna use this stuff, which you can't even see it because it won't focus. Similar to this, so that's just what I'm gonna go with. Oops, that looks professional. <laughs>